All right, today's video is going to be a brief exploration of why it's important to establish a replicable method as we're discussing our research project. Uh, when we communicate with our audience in April as we're presenting our findings, we're going to need to clearly communicate to them not only what the project was about, but how did we contribute to the overall body of knowledge? What was the method that we used uh, to go out and to gather data on our own so that we could contribute to this field? Now, this is important in the academic paper and in the presentation and oral defense. Today, we're going to look at it in a visual sense, but I want you to keep in the back of your mind that what I'm teaching you in terms of establishing a replicable method needs to be in the paper as well as in your presentation and oral defense. So let's take a look at what we mean by a replicable method and why it's important. I pulled these two excerpts from the holistic rubric for AP research. And if we see for a three, one of the elements that must be present is it describes a replicable research method with questionable alignment to the purpose of the inquiry. Now to move to a four and then possibly to a five, I need to logically defend the alignment of a detailed replicable research method to the purpose of the inquiry. Now for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna focus on the three for right now and touch on how to move that three into the four. This is the dividing line for most research projects to get out of that category of a two and move into a three. It needs to at least be a replicable research method, even if it's a questionable alignment. So let's remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. It can be questionable, it can be flawed, but can the reader of the paper or could the uh, scorer, the person who is sitting there and seeing your presentation in oral defense say to themselves, well, yeah, I know what they did and I believe there's a good shot that I could replicate their successes. So let's take a look at what that might mean. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the building block happiness experiment. Now this example uh, is provided from a book called The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acor where he does uh, academic research on happiness and neuroplasticity. And this is an example that he gave in his book and I realized as I was reading the example that it would work pretty well for demonstrating what we need to understand in relation to building a replicable model. So the question was, can thinking about happiness impact performance? Now remember, we're not focusing on the research question itself. We're just focusing on this method and whether or not it might be able to answer that question. So we're not evaluating the question itself, but we have a question. Can thinking about happiness impact performance? Well, if I take a look at this infographic, I see that there's a control group and an experimental group. I get that the control group is asked to place blocks of different size in order and the task is timed. So from that control group, I'll be able to come up with a time as to what this group was able to do this task with without any extraneous variables being placed on them. The experimental group, though, now has a controlled variable. They're asked to think of one thing that makes them happy before they're asked to place the blocks of different size in order, and then that task is time. Now it's logical that it's possible that from this experiment, as it's described right here, I may be able to draw a conclusion as to whether or not thinking about happiness impacts performance in a positive or negative way. Is there a correlation? Well, looking at this experiment, I have one group not thinking about happiness and performing the task and being timed. I have another group being asked to think about happiness before the task and being timed. If those times vary, then it's possible I could say happiness does have an impact, either positive or negative on performance. So it is logically aligned with what is being done. But this raises some questions. Does a previous infographic provide enough information for it to be replicable? Well, it's pretty flawed. I have some questions. How many participants? And what are their ages? If I have those details, would it be easier for me to replicate this? If we go back to the previous slide, oh, I'm so sorry. If we go back to this previous slide, I don't know the ages of the control group or the experimental group. So if I tried to replicate this, what if I have an age group that's teenagers or maybe even people in their 20s or 30s? 
Does that impact the outcome of the experiment? Could I replicate based solely on what this is? I'm being asked as the reader to make some guesses. What I want to do if I'm communicating about my research is provide as much detail as possible to clearly communicate so that anyone reading my work or observing my work does not have to come to their own conclusions. So now let's take a look at some slight changes. Didn't do an enormous amount of work here to change it, but slightly added detail so that I could clearly communicate. What I see here is in the control group and the experimental group, there are 10 children in each group. I also see that they're four years old. Well, is that an important detail? Well, yeah, a four-year-old is an enormously different person than a 14-year-old or a 34-year-old. If I had left that up to the person doing the replication study, we might have gotten widely varied results. So here I have 10 kids in each group and four-year-olds. I haven't changed anything else in the infographic though. Have I provided enough detail to the reader or to my audience so that they could replicate my study uh, without any major flaws. Well, let's ask ourselves some more questions. What type of blocks does that impact the outcome of the study? What are they doing with the blocks? That also could impact the study. How much time were they given? Were they given a target or a goal? Does that change it? If I say it's an open-ended activity, does the lack of time pressure impact the outcome? And were examples given for the experimental group? Or did we just say, think of something happy? If I give them an example, does that change what they're thinking about? Does it influence what they're thinking about? Does that influence change the outcome of the experiment? So now let's look at the new version. Once again, control group and experimental group. Ten children in each group, four-year-olds in all of them. In the control group, they were asked to place eight wooden blocks of different sizes in order from smallest to largest. The task is being timed. The goal is from one to five minutes. By adding in the details of eight wooden blocks, different sizes, and giving a specific task of order from smallest to largest, I now make it more likely that somebody could replicate my study. By providing the goal of one to five minutes, I also communicate that the control group was given these instructions, which makes it easier to duplicate. Whether or not that's a good instruction or whether or not that leads to flawed outcomes, that's not what we're talking about here. What we want to know is if I wanted to replicate this study, do I need that detail? And yes, if the control group was given those instructions, absolutely, I need to give those same instructions. Now let's look at our experimental group. They were asked to think of one thing that makes them happy, such as playing with a puppy. Now they're being given a very specific example, and because they're four years old, it's highly likely that they're being influenced by the idea of playing with a puppy because I gave them that idea. The idea that an example was given is an important detail that allows me to replicate the study. They were then also asked to place eight wooden blocks of different sizes in order from smallest to largest. And once again, the task is time. The goal is from one to five minutes. Now, I know you're all wondering, well, what, what did Sean Acor find out? Well, I could tell you to go read the book to find out, but it turns out in this particular experiment that thinking about happy ideas prior to doing the task actually led to them successfully completing the task a little bit faster than the group that wasn't thinking about happiness. So is this aligned to the question, can thinking about happiness impact performance? Well, the one variable between the two groups was thinking about something that was happy. And in the results, the experimental group was faster. So yes, I could draw a conclusion saying that yes, thinking about something is happy could possibly influence the outcome of a performance in a positive way. The more detail you can provide about each step of the process, the better. So as you're putting this together in your paper, remember this has to be in the paper. What are the steps of the data gathering process? Who are the participants? How long was the study or experiment? What details need to be explicitly described to help the audience to understand your process? What do we know about how we chose the participants? How were they recruited? Were they given incentives? What instructions were they given? Uh, 
Were they given a survey on paper? Was it via Google form? Were the interviews done in person? The more detail you can give, the greater the likelihood that your project will be replicable. If it's clearly replicable and aligned with the outcome of your question, if the reader can look at it and go, yes, that experiment would lead me to an answer that might relate to this question, the greater the likelihood that you're going to get the score that you want on the AP Research Project. Remember, this isn't just about the slideshow. This isn't just about making an infographic to communicate to your audience. This clear communication, this detailed communication has to be present in the paper. We're not asking you to define the research method. We're asking you to communicate how did you employ the method. As a researcher, what steps did you take? What choices did you make? Why were they good choices? for helping you to accomplish your goal of answering your research question or completing your project goal. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any further questions, you can always find me on Twitter at Mr. Henry Capstone. Feel free to email me anytime you want at phenry at lbschools.net and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.